Hello everyone, and welcome to the ReliQuest Q1 uh, launch video. Uh, my name is Russell Bentley. I'm the VP of Product Management here at ReliQuest, and I'm going to take you through um, the new capabilities we're launching um, this quarter. Um, Grey Matter, uh, our security operations platform built on an open XDR architecture, um, makes security possible for our organizations. It does that by increasing the visibility, reducing the complexity of security operations, and managing risk. The updates I'm going to talk about today um, each has an impact in, in those areas. Um, the first uh, I'm going to talk about is Grey Matter Phishing Analyzer. That's uh, the new uh, abuse inbox management capability that we're launching this quarter um, and uh, really uh, helps augment other phishing controls uh, within the organizations we serve. The second uh, set of capabilities I'm going to talk about are the updates to our ecosystem this quarter. We already have an extensive ecosystem that really helps uh, power the visibility uh, that our customers need for their security operations capabilities. And um, we'll be announcing nine new updates, uh, both net new connectors and uh, updates to existing connectors uh, this quarter as well. So um, without further ado, I'll leap in and talk about uh, Grey Matter Phishing Analyzer, our new uh, abuse inbox management capability. So phishing is a perpetual challenge uh, for organizations. Uh, there's nothing new about it. It's been uh, a threat for years, um, but unfortunately it's not going anywhere. A study by Deloitte last year concluded that 91% of all cyber attacks involved email in some way. And Security Magazine uh, did a study and concluded that phishing was up 61% year on year um, from 2021. Phishing can impact uh, an organization in many ways. Uh, one of the most publicized ways is through business email compromise, where uh, uh, an employee is manipulated into taking an action that allows an attacker uh, to receive funds or to change a financial transaction. The FBI estimate that that has cost organizations $43 billion since 2016. Uh, and that figure, again, uh, comes from 2022. So this is a huge problem. Uh, it's a well-known problem. Uh, and unsurprisingly, there's been a lot of activity uh, from organizations to try and address it. The first thing that organizations do, uh, and the most important thing, is to try and prevent phishing email from arriving uh, into their users. Secure email gateways have improved dramatically over the years, but none of them is 100% effective. Unfortunately, some small proportion of phishing email still makes it to the user's inbox, and means that uh, organizations also must train their users to expect phishing and how to react to it. One of the key um, ways that organizations want employees to react to phishing is to report it to their security operations team. This gives key information to the security operations team about the sorts of attacks the business is experiencing and allows them to adjust controls. So what are the challenges then with abuse inbox management? Well, really, there are three. The first is it's manual and tedious work. Analysts don't want to spend their time dealing with benign uh, information. They want to focus on the threat. The second is that these vo the volume of email in abuse inboxes is going up. as uh, awareness of phishing increases uh, and the impact of it um, is more and more, uh, employees are more and more aware of the impact of it. Um, they're erring on the side of caution and um, increasing the number of emails reported. The final challenge is as they do that, obviously, the um, a lot of false positives are introduced into that system. We, uh, in working with our customers, see about 85% of all email reported through abuse to the abuse inbox is actually uh, benign uh, and needs no further analysis. Uh, unfortunately, getting to that stage requires some work, uh, and that's the challenge of abuse uh, inbox management. So um, the gray matter phishing analyzing capability, the capability we're launching um, today, addresses those challenges. And it's a really simple process. Employees can report email uh, using the button in their email tool. Um, that then goes into the abuse inbox uh, as it would today. Gray Matter can then pull that information from the abuse inbox uh, and conduct a sophisticated analysis on it, pulling out key artifacts, analyzing those, looking at the structure of the email, even looking at the language. There's a sophisticated set of analyses that go on that are determining whether that is a benign or, or a malicious email. Um, the benign emails are then able to be returned to the reporter, often within the minutes of them reporting to them. Um, and that gives that user feedback and hopefully improves their accuracy around reporting phishing in future. If the email is malicious, then the integration of, of Grey Matter Phishing Analyzer into the wider Grey Matter capability means that we can enrich and analyze that threat 
um, using the grey matter ecosystem and our investigation and uh, capabilities, which means that when we return that back to um, the organisation, they get not only the the malicious email and and but they get a full analysis of it, and then the response action is clearer uh, and means they can save time in doing any further analysis their side, and that's the power of bringing that within to the grey matter ecosystem. So. The grey matter phishing analyzer is designed to solve that challenge of um, of the abuse uh, phishing inbox, saving our customers time, uh, making their analysts able to focus on the key uh, on the threats to their business. And it's another example of where grey matter is reducing the high time, low brain activity that often uh, makes security operations difficult for organisations, and is, core, is another core part of our mission to make security possible. Um, for organizations. So that's a grey matter phishing analyzer. I'm going to move on now and talk about the changes we've made to our ecosystem. The grey matter ecosystem is fundamental to grey matter. It provides unparalleled visibility into the organizations we serve through the integrations uh, that make, up, make it up. As of today, we have over 85 ecosystem integrations. The majority of those ecosystem integrations are bi-directional. And the reason we make them bi-directional is it means that we can not only pull the data from our uh, customers um, for detection and investigation purposes, but also use those same tools um, in response actions, meaning that um, when you want to take that response, you don't have to pivot into those tools to take them there. You can do it directly from the gray matter system. That also means we can automate um, response to our automate capability. Each of the integrations um, varies in what it can do, and it integrates with uh, Intel, Detect, Investigate, Hunt, or Automate, uh, depending on what the capabilities of that system are. In Q1 uh, 23, we're launching eight new updates or net new integrations into our ecosystem. The first of those is Jump Cloud, which is a cloud directory system. Uh, that integrates with our Automate capability and gives us new response actions for customers who are jointly Grey Matter and Jump Cloud customers, particularly things like maybe unlocking a user machine uh, if that's an appropriate response step. The next, Elastic. Um, Elastic is a log aggregation system as far as um, we see it and it integrates with our Hunt and Investigate, allowing us to pull data from the Elastic stack and in use that to enrich our investigations and to hunt across that data. The next is Semantic uh, Endpoint Protection. Now, Semantic Endpoint Protection is an endpoint detection and response tool. Uh, we already have a, a good number of those um, integrated into our ecosystem, and adding Semantic to that just increases the optionality for our customers and their choice as to which ones they'd like to support. For EDR technologies, um, they, invest, they tend to integrate with our Investigate and our Automate and our Hunt capabilities, allowing us not only to search across of the endpoint state and use that in investigations, but also use the response actions, things like isolating machines or changing policies uh, in endpoint tools. The next net new integration is Joe Sandbox. Now Joe Sandbox, a little bit different here, is a, uh, a malware analysis capability. And we've integrated that within our automate capability, which means that customers of Joe Sandbox and Grey Matter can now incorporate a, 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 an analysis of a URL um, within their investigate flows. Um, Trellix is another uh, new EDR capability for us, uh, working with investigate and hunt, and again with similar use cases to the ones I described for Symantec around isolating hosts, etc. Um, for that capability. And then we come on to the updates. So we've made an update to Forty Manager. Now Forty Manager is Fortinet's um, centralized management system. Here we've uh, recertified that against their latest standards, but also added new IOC management capabilities within that. The next, Netscope, Netscope CASB, we've been integrated with them for a while. They, they launched a new uh, version of their API uh, recently, and our latest update now incorporates the V2 API capabilities alongside some additional support for um, IOC management um, within there as well. And then finally, uh, for today's update, Zscaler, their cloud firewall capability. Again, this is a system we've been working with for a while, but the update here, again, a recertification, working with our automate capability to manage URLs uh, and the categorization uh, and policies within that firewall system. So as you can see, a broad range of updates uh, across our ecosystem, 
are clearly demonstrating how we're continuing to increase the visibility for our customers uh, and allow them the sort of optionality and choice that comes with our open XDR approach um, for the security operations platform. So with that, that concludes the updates for um, Q1 2023. Um, if you'd like any more information on any of those, then contact your ReliQuest representative or your customer success manager, uh, and I'll look forward to speaking to you again for the next update.